Today, I'm going to try to become the highest ranked player on the well-known Minds server, Nico's World. A few weeks ago, the owner reached out to me and gave me this challenge, and said if I was able to complete it, he would give one of my subscribers a ton of money and a high rank on the server. He warned me though that this journey would probably be close to impossible. He said just becoming a diamond rank which isn't even the highest would almost be impossible in 10 hours. So guys, I took on this challenge, so let's get right into it. My very first priority when I started was to find an actual unprotected area I could start mining at. But after walking downtown for just a little bit, I found a teleporter that said it would teleport me to a shop called Cookies and Clares, which <laughs> sounded pretty promising. I teleported here and sure enough I actually found unprotected land very easily. Not only that, there were some jungle trees nearby so I already started gathering lots of wood. So Nico explained to me a little bit before how it actually works to rank up. He said that you're gonna have to be doing the slash rank up command and it will tell you something you have to accomplish. And once you accomplish that, it'll let you rank up to the next level. And it said the first thing to get to the next rank would be to get 40 cooked stone blocks. So I quickly mined up of cobblestone and started cooking it inside my furnace. This only took me like 10 or 15 minutes. The next task it said I had to complete was a little bit more daunting. It said I had to get 20 blocks of coal. So I just mined a little bit deeper and I found a cave. It looked like someone had already been here, but whoever had been here didn't really care about coal. And getting these coal blocks took me about another 20 minutes. So I wasn't feeling too bad about myself. But the next challenge was to get 20 steel blocks. Right off the bat, I was already seeing a little bit of a pattern here. So I was making sure to dig up other ores while I'm at it, in case the next rank up would include getting that ore. When I was about at half the iron blocks I needed, I ran into the first monster I had seen in the entire game. Prior to this encounter, I thought maybe there weren't even mobs on this server. Right after this, in order to save time, I started cooking iron into steel ingots. And while I was waiting for that steel to cook, I checked out something in the inventory known as the shop. There seemed to be some pretty interesting items on here, but the one that interested me the most was the bread you could buy for $250. I've learned so far that you can earn a good amount of money from just digging ores. So it got me thinking, if I was able to dig enough ores and make enough money, I can just live in these caves instead of having to go back up to the surface and just live off of this bread. So I set my home here in this cave, which is a pretty big decision, which means I wasn't going back up to surface anytime soon. Also, as I continued mining, I actually found rainbow ore, which I thought would probably be really rare on the server, but somehow I already found it. So that was a big up. But then something really, really bad happened. As I was mining, I accidentally fell into a cave, and this resulted in me dying. Now I was back to square one with nothing. And I tried to go back to my home using the home button, but it wouldn't work from the inventory. I realized that since I used the command, it wouldn't work, and I wasn't able to get back to the cave. But then I remembered something. When I was looking at the shop, and Nico had mentioned this to me before, if you use $250, you can teleport back to your bones. At this time, I thankfully had $300. I checked my balance while I was checking out the shop a few minutes ago. So, I hit that teleport to bones button right away. Now I was down to only a few dollars, but it was worth it to reclaim my bones, because I don't know what I would have done without this. Once I reclaimed my bones, I headed back up to where my furnace was, and I actually already had enough steel to get to the next ring. So I grabbed the 20 steel blocks and boom, hit that rank up commit. The next task it said I need to get done was to get 20 copper blocks. So thankfully, because I was mining up other ores, I had already 20 copper that could be cooked. So then I headed out to just mine up more copper. Also, when you rank up, it takes 15 of those blocks that you need to rank up out of the 20, which means I was left with five steel blocks, which are crafted into a new pickaxe and steel armor. At this point, it was actually the end of hour one. I started went off hour two with actually finding another cluster of rainbow ore. I started cooking the rainbow ore that I had, because if I remembered right, rainbow ore makes very, very good and fast pickaxes. So I thought if I had a fast pickaxe, that helped me be way more efficient in mining these ores. And while I was waiting for this rainbow ore to cook, because it literally takes forever, I used a command to change the color of my name tag, which was a fun way to pass time. 
So I'm gonna be honest, I didn't feel like waiting for all this rainbow ore to cook. So I just waited till there's three ingots cooked and then I crafted my rainbow pickaxe, which yes, was very, very fast. But also this didn't help me that much because it broke in like a few minutes. While I was mining, the time came. I ran out of food. I ran out of the apples I started out with. So I went to the shop and bought my loaves of bread. While I was mining for the remaining copper ore, I actually also found mithril, which I turned into a pickaxe, which is not only fast like the rainbow pickaxe, but actually lasted a long time. I got a new game plan to try to find a cavern since it'll be easier to get ores if I'm in a huge cavern. So I started digging straight down for about 10 seconds and I already found one. This made the process to get the remaining copper way faster. So, at about an hour and a half in of this challenge, I upgraded to copper rate, which meant our next step was 20 blocks of bronze. Thankfully, I already was given a head start since there's five copper blocks left over from the rank up. So right off the bat, I was already a quarter way done with this next rank. While I was mining for copper and tin to make the rest of the bronze, I got a really good idea. I was like probably at spawn people selling their shops bronze for really really cheap. So I finally figured out how to use the home button properly so it would work and then I used the slash spawn command and went to spawn. I looked around at some of the shops and quickly found one that sold bronze but when I tried to buy from it it was out of stock. Also in that shop the person was selling a stack of logs for only $10. So I bought that in a heartbeat, so now I wouldn't have to worry about wood the rest of the challenge. I also had another light bulb moment where I just realized food's probably way cheaper if I buy it in person than buying it online. So I found a really, really good deal to buy honey. So I bought a ton of honey for only a few dollars. I looked around a little bit more to see if I could find a shop that sold copper, tin, or bronze. And I found one called Olga Shop, and the shop owner is actually there. So I bought a few ingots, and then I talked to my first actual human in this entire challenge so far. I interviewed the shop owner, Olga. I first told her about the challenge I was doing. I mean, she didn't even seem very impressed by the fact that I was doing this challenge. But then, right before I left, I asked her, if you could tell one thing to everyone, since you're in this video, what would you tell them? And there were some tense moments of silence. Dude, I was like waiting, like what is she gonna say? And then all she said was, oh thanks, but nothing. So there you go, everyone. I then teleported back to my mine and got back to mining the rest of the copper and tin I needed. So, at about 2 hours and 20 minutes in, I got to the next rank, bronze rank. And not too surprisingly, the next rank was to get 20 gold blocks. And I was actually super prepared for this. I already had over a stack of raw gold, so it's definitely paid off to be digging up random ores while mining. I was already about a thousand nodes deep, but I wanted to get a little bit deeper in hopes of being able to get more ores. So I started mining straight down to find a new cavern, and well, I did find one, but not in a great way. While I was mining straight down, I fell down suddenly in a huge drop and died. I wasn't freaking out too much because I already had $700, so I was just gonna teleport to them. Well, when I teleported to them, I couldn't find them. So I started stumbling around in the dark, just hitting randomly, hoping to get them. I was really frantic at this point with just running around trying to get sand. So I decided to teleport to my bones once again. And this time I was actually smart enough to mark where I teleported to at. So I knew where to look around. And thankfully, after about a minute of looking around, I was able to find them. Close call, guys. I mined around a little bit more, but then once again, like a noob, I died. I didn't really care that much though because I did have some money once again to teleport to my bones. So I decided while I was here at spawn since I just died, I might as well shop around a little bit. I looked around but didn't really find anything interesting so I just went back to shop where I bought honey last time and bought a ton of stacks of onions so I'd have more food. Then I teleported back to my bones, cooked the rest of the gold, and then upgraded to gold rank. And next was 
20 Misi blocks. Thankfully, I once again already had some Misi, so I already had a head start. I actually got a pretty good idea and I asked in chat if anybody is selling Misi, because if I was able just to buy a ton of Misi from someone, it'd be so much easier to rank up. But all I got was a no. So in actually like the very first hour of this video, in the chat I saw something that talked about a lottery that's in the game. So I was honestly kind of interested in checking this out. So I decided to buy a $500 ticket. This is really risky, but it said the prize was $204,500, which is unimaginably a lot. If I was able to get that, I would instantly win this challenge. Also, I just wanted to tell you guys, I don't do these 10 hour challenges all in one day. That's way too much time to be sitting at a computer for me. But I bought this ticket and then I actually got off for the day. So I was ready to check if I won the next day. So I joined on the next day, ready to check if I won and well, I didn't win. <laughs> That's why you don't gamble, I guess. I did some researching at this point because I wanted to know when BC blocks would start spawning because if I was able to find a cluster of Misi blocks, I'd be able to rank up to the Misi rank way faster than mining up Misi crystals. So first I looked it up online and there was nothing. So then I went into the actual code where <laughs> Misi blocks spawn and I've honestly never really understood or spawning that much so it didn't really help. It didn't make sense to me. So I just kept mining and I tried to get down to the next level of the cavern but while doing that, I fell and died. Thankfully though, I'd set my home right next to where that fall was. But since I was at spawn, I tried asking again to see if someone would sell me some Misi. But this time I was smart enough to put a price with how much I'd be paying for. Then a guy called Celsius wanted to sell me some Misi. Get it? <laughs> so I ended up buying an entire stack of Misi crystal for $500. Now I got the Misi and I ranked up to Misi player. But now the next rank I had to get was diamond player, which would require 20 blocks of diamond. Even though this is very stressful and is going to be a huge task, I was actually pretty happy at this moment because I was four hours in and Nico said it'd probably be impossible to even get to diamond rank in 10 hours. So my guess is I'd probably be able to get to at least diamond rank before 10 hours. So I got put back to the grind and started mining for diamonds. While I was mining for these diamonds, something really crazy and lucky happened. A rainbow player that was on called Super Plays soaked $50,000. That basically means that $50,000 was split up across everyone that was online. That means I got over $4,000 for free. Dude, I was so happy. First thing I did was go into the online shop and buy a glow staff. With these, you can basically just build a ton of light blocks. So this would allow me not to have to mine coal for torches anymore. But after using it for a little bit, I honestly wasn't very satisfied with it, so that kind of stink. I then used slash spawn and went to the spawn point to look around and shop. In the end, I just bought a few ingots of rainbow and a few diamonds. I then went back to my cave and asked if anyone could sell me some diamonds. And our good old Celsius talked to us again. So I teleported to him and bought the remaining diamonds. Guys, even before hour five, we were now at diamond rank. The next rank that we had achieved, it's the second to last one, crystal rank. And actually before I had teleports in mind, I actually did a little more trading with Celsius and bought 18 ingots of crystal. So we had a little bit of a head start, but crystal is extremely expensive. So it was gonna be very hard to get to this next rank. I decided to start cooking any rainbow that I'd picked up recently, because from what I heard, the next and final rank would be rainbow rank, the highest rank in Nico's world. While I was waiting for these to cook, I actually just sent a message in the chat just thanking everybody who's helped me so far and that I was doing this challenge and stuff, so I told everybody about that. And honestly, nobody really said anything. You can't really get crystal units by just mining. So I figured the best I have to do was just gonna be the mine a ton and then sell stuff to make money. But while I was mining, this guy called Silent V sent me a teleport request. I teleported to him and asked what he wanted. He then sent me a private message saying that he wanted to give me 20 blocks of crystal for free. Not because as a YouTuber, but he really liked seeing people rank up. Guys, this is crazy. 
and I told him that I'd have to pay him. I didn't want to just accept it for free. But he said that seeing people rank up was payment enough for him. So then I decided to just place any blocks of ores I had and also put all my ores inside a chest and give it to him. And I told him he could use this to give to other players. But guys, this was, this was crazy. This was almost exactly at five hours into this challenge. And we were the second to last rank. We had one more rank to go, which is rainbow player. I told him thank you a ton of times and then left back to mining. I mined for a few minutes, but then he talked to me again and requested for me to teleport to him. I came to him and inside a chest, he gave me crystal boots. He also gave me these for free to help me on my challenge. They greatly improve your speed. You can move way faster with them. I was so happy guys. So I told him to get in the camera and let's emote together. Well guys, now that I'm a crystal rank, I need to start working on becoming a rainbow rank. So my plan is mainly just to mine a ton and hopefully find rainbow ore, but also just get ores to sell and make money and then buy rainbow ingots. Rainbow ingots do range though from $100 to $300 just for one ingot from what I've seen. So this is going to be very hard. These next 5 hours I'm going to have to be a very awesome salesman. After I mined for just a little bit, there's this girl that needed help called Nerf 2. She needed water to craft crystal ingots so I helped her with that. And then also gave her some food later and then eventually sold her my mithril boots for free. I went back to mining and I actually found my first Measy block. And right away I started my selling. I pretty quickly sold some torches to Decent for $50. Next I tried selling to the Spanish community. And yes, I did type this out in Spanish, I didn't use Google Translate. Which probably was the reason no one bought it from me. They probably thought I was speaking Australian or something. I didn't have a successful trade though right after this. I sold half a stack of diamonds for $220 to this guy called Big Builder. And I also got him to buy some Misi blocks for me for $100. And I just kept trying to sell and sell. There's this guy called A Dragon. I tried to sell to him so he could rank up to the next level. That didn't work. I tried selling torches again. That didn't work. I then tried to bid torches, see if people would place bids. That didn't work, so I kind of gave up and went downtown to try to shop and see if I could find some good deals. I did actually find something really, really helpful, and this was this shop that if you gave them one rainbow ore, they'd give you a rainbow ingot. Basically, they're just being nice, so I won't have to cook rainbow ore. So I already exchanged a few rainbow ore that I had and kept it in mind for later usage. While I was shopping, also I restocked on onions, and man, while I was walking around, there was lots of drama going on, lots of people killing each other. So I tried to make some money off of this, and I asked if anyone wanted to PvP me, and if they won, they'd get torches, and if I won, I'd get free money. But you know how people like me selling stuff? They don't like it. Although I did sell an engraved pickaxe to a person for $50, so that was nice. I was walking around a little bit, and I walked over to Decent, and he started getting attacked by this player called Dirtblock. And he got really annoyed and he said he'd pay $4,000 if anyone could kill this guy. So hey, when you need money, you go do crazy things. So, <laughs> Domain Descent for the next few minutes chased after this guy. The guy was a pro gamer, man. He could do PvP like crazy and do parkour like crazy. So we could not catch up to him. So I ended up giving up on this pursuit and no $4,000 for me. At this point, I had about $2,300 and $500 in physical cash. And once again, I was too soft-hearted and I ended up giving someone called Nightfire six diamond blocks basically for free, but I asked them if they had any rainbow ore, so they gave me three rainbow ore, which for me was a great trade. I ended up mining with them for a little bit and we were about 6,000 blocks deep. Deason then asked me why I didn't ever join a faction. So factions are basically just like clans or groups that people are in to team up with each other. I mean, I kind of had joined one because I made my own called Sync, which lasted for like two minutes and then I deleted it. But he was saying if you joined them, that people in the group could help you out a ton. But I told him this was a solo mission, so I didn't really want that much help from other people. Well, then he told me to come to Spud. 
I teleported to spawn, and he gave me eight rainbow ore for free. I was thanking him a ton, and he said good luck to me on my mission. So there we go guys, already eight more rainbow ore. So I went back to mining, I ended up finding six more rainbow ore. But guys, it was hour nine. I started off hour nine with going to the rainbow exchange and turning all my rainbow ore into rainbow ingots. And then I went back to the place where I buy my onions and I restocked for my last time so I'd have food for this last hour. So then I was gonna teleport back to my home to start mining, but I accidentally did slash set home. Yeah, I just set home on the street at spawn. This only means one thing. We're on the last hour and I now do not have a mine to go mining for ores to sell or even just getting rainbow ore. I started asking Deason if I could mine with him, but he didn't reply. Then I saw Olga's online and asked her and she didn't reply. So I started just running around randomly because I did not know what to do. I ended up finding a little shop that sold rainbow blocks and I bought one. So now we're at around $2,000. So I decided to at least try to start a little bit of a mine. So I found a little cave and started mining down. I picked up this thing called a stone rune. I asked in chat what it was and people said it's basically like a lucky block. I ended up getting two of them and I used them. And yeah, they just, they just gave me junk. I invited a person to my tiny little mine called Mariata, and we just started mining around, but literally there was not much of a point to it now. I started begging people to buy the last few ores that I had, but nobody was saying anything. I asked if there's any way someone could sell me rainbow ore. I only had 30 minutes left in this challenge, and I needed to get rainbow ore as soon as possible. There's also this girl online called Avery who also needed rainbow ore, but I told her that the fact that I really, really needed rainbow ore even more than her because I was doing this challenge and it was the last 30 minutes. Then she asked me what would happen if I didn't complete this challenge. I told her not much, just the fact that none of my subscribers would get free money and rainbow rank. But then I asked her if she had an idea for punishment, she could tell me one. Okay, quick pause guys. If you're a guy watching this, never, ever, ever in your entire life, ask a girl for an idea for a punishment. I learned this afterwards. Anyways, resume. So first of all, before she told me punishment, she asked if I was a boy. That was extremely creepy and that made me even more afraid of what this punishment could be. I finally cracked and told her I was a guy and she said that my punishment had to be that I would have to sing the Barbie song if I lost. Now the pressure was even more on. There's a guy called Ice Chips online and I started begging him if he had rainbow ore, but he wouldn't sell me any. And this Avery girl just kept trolling me telling me that I wasn't gonna win. But finally this guy called Wolf spoke up and he said that he had enough rainbow to rank up. So I teleported to him in a heartbeat. I started giving him everything I had, I paid him all the money I had. The problem is, Avery was begging otherwise and asking him if he would please not sell me any rainbow. He ended up liking Avery's idea more, and he also told me he actually didn't have any rainbow. I was just freaking out, guys. I literally had four minutes remaining. Dude, Avery is so evil. I just kept running around. I did not know what to do. There was one minute remaining. I was begging and begging. Finally found a little shop, and I bought nine rainbow ingots. Quickly crafted them into a block. And guys, it's over. This 10 hour challenge is over and I did not get into rainbow rank, sadly. Honestly, it was pretty sad. I did really enjoy this journey though. And this whole challenge was actually pretty fun and I was pretty excited with how far I got into this challenge for only having 10 hours. So anyways, now for what everybody's been waiting for. I'm a Barbie girl in a Barbie world. Imagination life is a creation. Oh yeah. There you go, Avery, and our 14.6% of female viewers. And for all the guys watching this, please pray for me. But hey guys, let's end this video on a good note. Even though I didn't get to rainbow rank, Nico said he would still do his giveaway. And instead of $20,000, he made it $50,000. So we will be posting a community post in like a day or two. So make sure to comment in that community post with your username on Nico's world. And whoever wins is going to get this $50,000 in rainbow rank. Also, if you guys haven't checked out my previous tower challenge video, make sure to check that one out too. It's very awesome. 
So anyways, God bless you guys and have a great day.